All right. Hello, everyone. So today I'm going to go over remixing open educational resources and what this looks like. I've made a quick PowerPoint and then I'll do a demo. I'm going to use LibreText as the main software that we're using, but we'll talk about a couple different ones. So let's get started. What is remixing open educational resources? So an OER is under a Creative Commons license. This means it's a specific kind of copyright that allows you to use, edit, and make something new as long as you give credit to the original authors. Now, there are many different kinds of Creative Commons licenses, licenses, and I will go over them in detail in a different video. This one, we are looking at basically how do you use it when you have licenses that can be combined. So what does it actually look like to remix? It means that you're taking multiple different OERs and you're putting the content together to make a new OER textbook. You're often pulling from different buckets and you're pulling into one new bucket. And no, this is a question I get regularly from faculty. It is not plagiarism as long as you give credit and follow all the licensing rules. There are certain creative comments that can't be combined, but a lot of them can be. So what is curating an anthology or a collection in comparison? So some OERs, like we just talked about, you cannot mix them together, at which point it is a collection or an anthology. This is similar to say, putting things together in a basket, such as the basket of fruit there, or think of it like curating a whole bunch of different artworks on a, on a wall. And you might be able to put in an introduction, you put a lens on it, you talk about how it is, but you're not actually editing individual works of art. They are put together as a final collection. And then the licensing stays with those individual collections. So depending on the licensing, some can be remixed just fine and some cannot. If they cannot, an anthology or a collection might be your only option. So how do you choose? If you're like, Rachel, I'm overwhelmed by this already. I don't understand copyright law. Really, we're looking at a couple different things. You're probably going to want to either do an adaptation, which is like a smoothie, where you take things together and you really pour them all into one bucket and you mix them together and you make one smoothie. Or you might pull them together and make a collection, which is more like a bento box here, um, where basically you have these different separate elements together and then you just create introductions and conclusions. So choose carefully, but then also when you start actually looking for your different sources, you might realize that this is, decision is made for you based on the licensing of the content that's already out there. And then you need to choose a bucket. Where are you going to dump all of this content once you have it? You've pulled some different ones in, you've found some different resources you like, you're ready to remix. Where are you actually putting all this content in order to be able to remix it? You have to choose a bucket. Buckets that I recommend, uh, LibreText is free. It's one of my favorites. Pressbooks cost money to create on it, but they will host it for free if you can move it over into their open library. But it's kind of confusing and it does have a cost upfront. You could also use Google Sites or Google Documents. I've seen faculty use Microsoft Documents. The challenge with Microsoft Documents is there are additional layers of security. So often you've sent a Microsoft document to someone thinking that they're looking at a shared document and what you've actually done is duplicated the content and they're looking at a separate document and you're not actually collaborating on the same document anymore. Whereas Google Documents, you can see the person on it. It doesn't have the same levels of security, so it's easier to do collaborations in Google Documents. You could also build a Google site to be able to move back and forth between lots of content without having to scroll through a massive book. However, if you have options to do a LibreText, that has been the easiest for our faculty here. So next steps for remixing. You decide on a bucket such as LibreText, you make a comprehensive table of contents. A lot of faculty want to skip this step. I do not recommend that. I strongly recommend creating a comprehensive table of contents. You start searching for OER material that could cover that content. You decide on book and chapter big picture structures within that table of contents. You're going to make an OER map, which I will show you how to do, where you actually link out to different OERs in your table of contents, and then you start remixing. So basically, you're pulling from a lot of different OER buckets, and you're combining them into one bucket. So here's an example table of content. You are the subject expert. Only you know how your students need this content broken down. However, people like myself, I am a librarian who has a master's in library and information science. I understand end user behavior. There are entire master's degrees now in instructional design, usability and universal design. So you're not expected to know everything. And so when you hit pain points, reach out and ask questions. Think about things like, do you want your book to align with your Canvas course? 
What is written on your course outline of record? What does the state CID say? And you can basically start mixing and matching and create your table of contents based on your needs as the subject expert and based on how many weeks the course is taught. You get to think about these things. Uh, how you want to structure it. I do recommend each chapter having the same structure, such as having a chapter introduction with learning objectives at the beginning and say an end of chapter summary or synthesis at the end. This will help create usability and consistency, even if you're pulling from different source material for the body of each chapter. And then lastly, think about, you know, how comprehensive do you want to make your outline? The easier it will be, the more comprehensive your outline is. So here's another thing. These are examples of OER maps. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I was always a spreadsheet person myself, but I found a lot of faculty get overwhelmed by spreadsheets. So at the top here, this is an example of someone who built one in a Word document. This is a chapter outline with an introduction and then a conclusion to that chapter. And in between, they just linked out to all the different core concepts covered in different OERs that they're gonna pull from. So this one is pulling from like five or six different OER resources into one chapter, and they have it all outlined here in a little map. You could also do it in a spreadsheet like you see below. You might be tempted to skip this step and say, Rachel, I don't need it. I'm just gonna browse and pick and, and pull. And the challenge with this is you might end up over aggregating, which is a whole other challenge. So I strongly recommend making an OER map after making a comprehensive table of contents. So this is the temptation. This is the tip. I have seen this from so many faculty. Resist the urge to pull multiple different OERs that are very similar and say, oh, I'll just remove the duplications later. I'm just going to pull it all in and then I'll be able to delete duplications and go through it later. This basically ends up creating a mountain of extra work for you and often leads to massive content that only you as a subject expert would know what can be deleted and what can be consolidated and what can be mixed together. And I have seen PhDs aggregate thousand page documents with duplicative content and then basically create this mountain of work for themselves and the project plateaus. And there's also been a lot of faculty who they just, they love their work so much and they have a PhD in it. And I'm just going to encourage you all to resist the urge to create some sort of extensive master's level ma manifesto in your subject area. Remember that these are for community college students in lower division classes. Yes, it is a college level course and you might be a PhD in this course, but your students are not PhD candidates. They are not master's level students and a 2000 page book isn't practical and it makes it less usable. So focus on your final audience, time constraints, the slows, the course outline of objective, and the CID. This is one of the hardest temptations that I have seen faculty fail to, um, to reject. They, they, they fail to resist this, and they over-aggregate, and they create mountains of work for themselves. And then they say, can you help me remove duplication? I am not a subject expert in your area. It's one of the few things that other people will struggle to help you with. We would not have pulled the duplicate content to begin with. So instead, I strongly recommend thinking of it like a puzzle. Pull one that covers 75 to 85% of the content if you can find it, identify the knowledge gaps, and then go back into those other OERs and pull just those paragraphs or just that section that covers that one little bit of missing content and make those knowledge gaps very clear so you can make sure you're making it as comprehensive as you want without creating duplicative content. You can pull from as many different OERs as you want, but if you dump 25 puzzles onto the ground and then try to pull it together, it's much more confusing than pulling one puzzle in with a couple different pieces that you're adding in. So this is my, my quick tip for all faculty. So once you have your OER map, you're actually ready to start remixing. Now I'm gonna focus on LibreText remixing. However, you could also remix and do this in a Word document or a Google document or in Pressbooks. So if you're not using LibreText, I don't know how, much, how helpful the rest of this will be for you. Here is all the things I'm gonna cover in the demo, how to log into LibreText. You're gonna become a verified instructor. We'll talk about the conductor page and creating a project in the conductor page creating an actual book within the conductor project page, titling your OER, creating a book, um, using more tools to actually access their OER remixer software, using the remixer software, and then clicking to drag content into your book from the OER remixer, making sure we save it, and then how do you actually start editing your book. So this is the demo section, and I should be able to just click here. Hopefully my internet will work for you all. This is just the LibreText homepage. This is often where it's gonna take you. You click up here on the login 
and it's going to take you here. Now you might ask you to log in. I've already been logged in. So just make sure you log in with your password. This is your main page. Anytime you get confused, I would recommend just going back to this little rocket. Whenever you get confused, go back to the rocket. It'll take you back to this page. And you're usually going to be looking for this conductor option. So you click on conductor and it's going to take you here. Now I have a lot of different projects here, but say we need to create a brand new project. This bright green option right here says create conductor projects. You click there and it's going to ask you to create a project title. So say I wanted to do OER, do it yourself for faculty um, creation process, creation process, right? And I will just delete this book afterwards. And right now this project is only visible to me. If I click here, this would be anyone who has a link to conductor would be able to see it. And then you hit create project. Sometimes it takes a minute. Now we are here. I've had a couple of faculty say, well, Rachel, how do I get to the book from here? You haven't created the book yet. You are now at the project page. You've created the project in LibreText, but now we need to actually create the book. So right here in green, where it says create book, you're gonna create the book. Here you have to choose the library that's gonna be in. This is one of the few things that LibreText struggles to let you alter afterwards. So be very careful about what library you choose. Their libraries are interestingly named. They're not like the Library of Congress subject headings. So if you don't know which ones you're at, you can always Google your area of expertise and LibreText and see which library it's in. I know that most OER stuff is found in the humanities. Call the title of the book, change that here if you want. And then once you've got that, you hit create book. And it takes a couple minutes to create. Now, this is one of the things that you can have ready in your table of contents. These are the kind of things you ha can have ready to go. So when you actually go to build in any software, having that comprehensive table of contents built out, having that OER map built out, that's what's really gonna help expedite this process. The software itself, whether you're using LibreText or Pressbooks or anything else, that is one of the things that if you're learning that at the same time you're trying to develop all of the scaffolding, it's gonna be much more challenging. So here we are, we now have a book created. If you wanted to go to the, bit, the book link, this is where you would actually go to the book link. And this is gonna show you what it gives you automatically. It gives you one chapter and it gives you a front matter and back matter, okay? Each one of these is a chapter. This is their default template that it comes with, all right? But we are gonna talk about how do you remix within this. Say you have a beautiful table of contents already ready to go. You're gonna go over here to more tools and you're gonna to go to the OER remixer. You're gonna open up the remixer. Now, half the time when you open this up, it's gonna say you don't have access. Right down here in the bottom right-hand corner, it'll turn red and it'll say you don't have access to, to get this. That is because technically this is separate software. We are now in the LibreText Humanities Remixer tool and it's separate software. So if it shows red and it, you don't see anything right here on this side, just click up here, log in again, go back to the conductor page, back to more tools, and relaunch the remixer tool. And it'll come up this way. It'll turn green and, and orange down here in the corner and it'll load this up. Now you are in the LibreText Humanities remixer tool. Now, if you scroll down here on the right-hand side, this is our book. On the left-hand side is all the LibreText stuff that we can pull from. So over here, this is where you would pull your table of contents, okay? Now, you cannot just click on this. I've had a people, people be like, Rachel, I clicked the button and nothing happened. You have to click on the actual folder and then you can start adding chapters. So say we are teaching this in an eight week course and we want eight chapters. So I just pulled it there. You can also click and drag. So we want the back matter to be at the bottom. So we're just gonna click and drag. Now we have eight chapters, but say I know that chapter two has two parts. I just click on it. And now I have two parts to that chapter. Say I accidentally create an extra chapter and I'm like, oh no, I don't want a ninth chapter. You just click on it and hit the trash button, okay? Now to edit these chapters, I don't want my chapters to be labeled as first, second, third chapter. Say I want the first chapter to be labeled introduction to OER. Now I can double click and it'll take me here and I could do introduction, intro to OER and hit save edits. You can also click and hit the edit option and it'll take you to the same page. So say we do um, YOER is the second chapter and you hit save. And this is how you can start building this out. If you have your table of contents pre-built, you're just gonna copy and paste it in. It'll be really easy breezy cover girl. Say you decide way later on. So say down here, we had a remixing option. And what I like about this tool is sometimes you think your table of contents is perfect. And after you get it built, you're like, you know what, actually this should be an earlier chapter. If you've built it in a Word document, you have to change all the numbers yourself. But here, if you just click and drag this, say we want it to be chapter four instead, now it's chapter four. It automatically renumbers everything for you. So this is one of the easiest ways to do that. Once you have the table of contents, 
I strongly recommend you save to server. You have not saved it yet. This has just brought you to the save server page. You hit save to server a second time and it shows you we've made 16 changes and it's updating those changes for you. If you see anything turn red here, it means that it didn't necessarily save it. I've had that happen for a couple faculty. So just be careful of that. Sometimes depending on your internet connection, the browsing, maybe their server, sometimes this can take a little bit. I recommend just saving regularly. Think about it as early um, computer science where you just had to save all the time. I know now we have auto save options for everything. So it's very easy to forget to save because we assume everything's being saved for us. I recommend you just save regularly. So here, right down here, this is where you can go and look at the book you just created, all those new chapters. But we're gonna go to revise because I wanna talk about just a little bit about how to pull in content. And you're gonna hit revise current text. It's gonna take you back to the remixer with all of our different options here. Now over here is where we'd actually pull in the content. Now bookshelves is where a lot of things are found. Now say hypothetically, we didn't do our table of contents because we were um, not on our game. All right, and so we wanna look up how to OER LibreText, okay? And we wanna pull in some context already that's already built, right? And we're gonna do library science. We're gonna do library science, library science, just so that we can get a very specific text. So say we, say we were doing something in biology, just so we have an example of something that we wanna pull in specific. And it'll show us exactly where things are. So this is the bookshelf. This is the biology bookshelf. All right, and it'll take us to the different bookshelves and say we were looking at something in agriculture specifically related to do-it-yourself OER. See, I'm building something just for them. We've got crop science right here. Um, and so say we go to here and say we really like this first chapter for some reason. We're just like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want, but I only want this population genetics, okay? So if we have that, we have to go and find this in the remixer tool. So this is in bookshelves and it is in biology. So you're gonna to go to bookshelves and then you are gonna to go to, I'm in the humanities library up here. So you're gonna to go to the biology bookshelf, right? So you see up here in the upper left-hand corner, now I'm in the biology library. So biology library up here, biology library, we go to bookshelves, bookshelves, then we go to agriculture, agriculture. Then we're gonna to go to crop genetics right here. It shows the author, perfect. And then say we really liked within chapter one, just this populations and genetics. We can go, which is right here. You can just click and drag, you click and drag. And this is a chapter one, but say we wanted it in chapter four. So we put it in chapter four and you'll notice it automatically changed it. So over here, it was a 1.4 was the numbering within their chapter system. But when we clicked and dragged it over here, it automatically changed it for us to be the number that we needed it to be. So this is how you can start pulling in content and it'll automatically change it for you to be your numbering system. And you can do a little browsing, right? So say you're like, you know what? Actually, I also really like this one. I didn't think about that. I think that this one should go in here too. You can just click and drag them in and you're good to go. Now, say you've decided you also don't want this chapter. So we are gonna delete this chapter. And anything that turns orange, that means it's already published, but you've made changes to it and it's renumbering it. Anything in green, you have already just added that hasn't been saved. And anything in black, that is what is already live and already published. So say you really like this and it doesn't matter because I'm gonna delete this book anyway. You hit save to server. You come back here. Now again, we have to save it again. Save to server a second time, okay? And you'll see we've made 11 changes just by pulling in those three options. We've made 11 changes to our books. Okay, we deleted those. So say we wanna go and look at this now that we've actually pulled some content in to be remixed. Now it's loading the book. We are looking at our actual book now. So we went from one book to eight chapters, right? And say we had in chapter four was where we pulled in that content. And here we have a couple different ones that we've already pulled in. So when you're remixing content, you have the option of editing other people's work. As long as you give them access and you give them credit for things, you will be able to edit this content. So say we really like it, but we're looking at the learning objectives and we're thinking, you know what? I want my learning objectives to be numbered, okay? The biggest mistake people make is they go up here and hit edit and it doesn't give you access. It goes, oh my God, no access. And you go, what happened? I thought I was able to access this. Just hit cancel. It's no big deal. Discard changes. Now, right here, you'll see this little tiny fork option. 
This is going to be really important because right now, the people who wrote this, it's still live on them, which means if they edit this content, we basically have a mirror of it and it automatically will update on our end. But if I want to edit it, I need to copy and paste it and freeze it so that I own it and I can edit it. And it'll still show them as authors. They still get credit. All the attributions are still there. So you go up to this tool right here and you hit this button and it's going to say, do you want to fork this page? And you say yes. And then usually I'll ask you a second time. Are you sure that that's what you want to do? And it's taking a bit. Usually it comes up a second time and says, do you want to fork this page? And if not, we'll try it again. We'll click it and we'll hit OK. And then it should come up and let us fork it. Mm, it doesn't want to let us. Interesting. Fork this page will transform this page. We want to hit OK. There it is. There's a second one and it says it's successfully forked. Okay, and I'm glad that happened because one of the things you have to understand is that sometimes free software is going to be a little bit sketchy. It just doesn't always work perfectly and smoothly. LibreText is a, a nonprofit through UC Davis. So just understand that sometimes just finagle it, try it a couple times, and sometimes it'll work better and see it's thinking, it's trying. But once you fork it, now if you hit the edit option in the dark gray option up here, and you go to hit edit, now it's going to show you that you have access to edit this content, okay? And down, what I love about this also is it pulls in all of the images, all the alt text, all the attributions, everything you already need. And at the very bottom, it'll also give you all of your proper credit already. Everything's linked out. It gives you all the files already uploaded with the proper HTML and CSS, but it allows you to edit it. Say so you're like, you know what? I just, I think that my learning objectives need to be numbered. Say it was something as simple as that. Okay, and you change the learning objectives to number, maybe you want to add in a whole other element here, right? So you just want to add in something here that you're like, this is really important to me. Once you have it added in the way you want, you've edited it, up here in the light blue bar, you're going to hit save, okay? And it's going to save your changes. So now this content is frozen in time. You own it. You can edit it however you want. You can add and delete stuff to it, and you have access to a book. So rather than having to create this entire chapter from scratch, you're able to pull in what from other subject experts have done and then edit their content. So that's forking and editing from existing content that we've pulled in with the Remixer tool. So remember, if we go back to the Remixer here, okay, and we go back to revise book, and we revise the current text. And anytime that you get confused, there's always the rocket option. Just go back to that anytime you get confused. So here we go right here. We didn't save this yet, which is why we still showed eight pages, right? So say you want to add in a blank page because you're like, I just want to author my own sections at the beginning and I want to author my own end of chapter sections. So say here you want to do an introduction, chapter introduction, chapter intro, and say you want to do an end of chapter, end of chapter, end of chapter summary. Okay. You could add in discussion posts, anything you want. So you hit save to server, save to server again says that we've made nine changes. So it's going through those nine changes again. I recommend just saving regularly. It's easier than trying to save once in a while because depending on your internet connection, then go back to your textbook will be available here. It's going to take you back to the main page where all of your book will be able to be viewed. Now you'll also notice, see how you've got the little dotted lines around it? That means you're in the conductor, you're in the editing element. If you were looking at this as a student, well, first of all, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not, it's still in Workbench. But once it's published, these would be solid lines, okay? So this is where you can edit all the content that you've already either pulled in from the Remixer or you've created placeholders. So we created two placeholders in this book. And right here, you're like, wait, I can't see it. So you click this little plus button and you're gonna give it a top hierarchy and hit add tab. And now suddenly we have the introduction and we have an end of chapter summary. So if we click on this, it's going to be blank because it's a placeholder, right? We didn't pull any content in. We just created a placeholder. So you can go up and you can hit edit and say you wanted to add in chapter learning objectives. You can go to boxes and you can scroll down to objectives and it'll automatically give you a box with everything ready to go. Okay. Say you want to add in some content, you add in whatever, you know, introduction you want to talk about in your chapter. And then you want to go to elements and insert a horizontal line. And then you want to talk about a couple attributions or references, you know, maybe you talk about a couple of things you reference. You could put that here and you're good to go. Just hit save. And now you have edited your placeholder and you've made it a full page and you're good to go. 
So this is how you edit. Anytime you get confused, you're like, I'm lost. You can always go back to the conductor page with the rocket. This is going to be your home page. This is your, um, your full LibreText. These are all the libraries right here. If you just want to browse, you can go back to the conductor. It's going to take you to all your projects. So I've been working on a lot of projects here. And you can talk about the one that we just did is right here. You can pen projects if you want them to be up here. And that is how you can go through and edit. If you have a really strong, really lovely table of contents, you're going to do much better. So next up, we'll talk about really editing within LibreText and some other steps, but that is how to get you started remixing. So you are good to go. And I'm going to stop share and good luck and happy editing.